Today we're going to start the last section of um, this class, the, the, the beginning of our last unit. Our last unit is going to be on applications of integration to geometry. Uh, so the majority of this is going to be about area and volume and things like that. And so we talked about finding area before, and we're going to just get a little bit more um, in depth about it in this unit. So um, when we talk about finding the area under a curve, what that really means is finding the area between the curve and the x-axis. So anytime you hear area under the curve, always think area between the function and the x-axis. So we're gonna have a couple little pieces of this that we're gonna think about as we go through. The first thing we're always gonna do is determine if our function is continuous on the interval we're given. If it is, you can jump right down to two, but if it's not, the integral has to be broken up um, into multiple integrals at each place where there's a discontinuity. Uh, once we've done that, we'll jump to number two down here. It says, find any places where our function crosses through the x-axis. So if we're looking at the area underneath some curve from A to C, but it crosses through the x-axis at B, to get the section from A to B, we'll do one integral from A to B of f of x dx. But then to get the value of the area between B and C, we'll have to integrate that, but then take the opposite of it. So we'll do an opposite, we'll subtract the integral from B to C of f of x dx. Because we know when we do an integral of a section below an x-axis, um, that's going to give us a negative value. So if we take the opposite of it, subtracting it, that'll turn into a positive area, and we'll get the positive area. And so we'll do that to pick the you know, all the sections above integrate them separately, all the sections below integrate them separately, and you take the opposite of those ones, and then combine them all together, add them all together to find your total area. So let's take a look at an example where we're looking for the area of the region bounded by the x-axis, the curve x squared plus 1, and the lines x equals 2, and x equals so really, we're talking about this area right here. This uh, area is found uh, on a continuous interval where there are no places where a function crosses through the x-axis. So this one should be exceptionally straightforward. We'll just integrate from 2 to 5 of x squared plus 1 dx. And using the power rule, that's x cubed plus x from 2 to 5, or 125 thirds plus 5 minus 8 thirds plus 2, and 125 thirds, here we have plus 5 minus 2, so we got 125 thirds minus the 8 thirds plus, uh, plus 3, so plus 9 thirds, which gives us 126 thirds, which is 42. So nothing special, nothing really um, major interest to do with that one, just integrate from 2 to 5. For this one, we're going to look for the area of the regions, regions, and we'll notice there's an S there. There's possibly going to be multiple regions here. Between f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 from negative 2, 3. So the first thing to do is think about is the function continuous? And the answer to that is, yeah, this function is definitely continuous. So just a polynomial function. Uh, so we don't need to break it up into integrals for that and multiple integrals for that. But we do need to think about any x-intercepts this might have. And if we factor x squared minus 2x minus 3, that ends up giving us x minus 3 and x plus 1, which tells us this has x-intercepts at 3 and at negative 1. And just knowing that this parabola opens up, this concave up parabola, here's negative 1 and 3, we know we're going to have something like this, which means that the piece from negative 2 to negative 1 is above, and the piece from negative 1 to 3 is below. And we'll want to do an integral from negative 2 to negative 1 of x squared minus 2x minus 3, and we'll subtract from that the integral from negative 1 to 3 of x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so as we integrate that, that becomes x cubed over 3 minus x squared minus 3x. 
from negative two to negative one. And we'll subtract from that the same thing, x cubed over three minus x squared minus three x, just using the power rule from negative one to three. And our arithmetic is going to probably get a little bit messy here, but that's okay. Um, negative one cubed is negative one third. And then we'll subtract one and add three. And we'll subtract this evaluated at negative two, which will be negative eight thirds minus four plus six. And then we will subtract this whole second piece which looks like that first part is nine minus another nine minus another nine. And then we'll subtract at negative one. That was already, we did that negative one third minus one plus three. And let's see here, if we combine together all the things with thirds, we have negative one third plus eight thirds, that'll be seven thirds. And then we got three minus signs attached to this last. One third, so we have seven thirds minus a third is six thirds. So we end up with two minus one plus three uh, minus a negative four is plus four minus six. And nine minus nine minus nine is negative nine. So we're going to subtract negative nine. So we'll add nine. And then we've got minus a minus for this last piece. So that's adding negative one plus three or adding two. And Looks like if you put all that together, you get two minus one is one plus three is four plus another four is eight minus the six is two plus nine and two comes out to be 13. So important to note that what we had to do is we had to break it down at negative one because that's where it crossed through the x-axis to give us two separate integrals. All right, so our next one, we're going to be looking for the area of the region that's between the curves sine x times cosine x on the interval from 0 to pi. So the first thing to think about is from 0 to pi, is this thing ever going to cross through the x-axis? And we should, uh, we should know that it's going to. Uh, because in the first quadrant, from 0 to pi over 2, they're both positive. But in the second quadrant, uh, sine's positive, but cosine is negative, And therefore, uh, it's going to be negative values. So we know that from 0 to pi over 2, this thing is going to be positive. And from pi over 2 to pi, this thing is going to be negative. So it doesn't really matter exactly what it looks like. We know it's going to be above, and then it's going to be below. And this is essentially what it is does actually end up looking like, right? Here's pi over 2, and uh, here's pi. And so we will do an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x cosine x. And then we will subtract from that an integral from pi over 2 to pi of sine x cosine x. And for both of these, we can do the u substitution sine x times cosine x. Um, we'll do the u substitution where u is equal to sine and du is equal to cosine x dx. And so each of these will just become an integral of u du. And we'll have to then go in and replace the 0 and the pi over 2 um, and the pi over 2 and the pi on the other one. And so the sine of 0 is 0. So we're still going to have an integral from 0 to somewhere. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So it's the integral from 0 to 1 of u du minus the integral from pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is already 1, and then sine of pi is 0. So we've now got 0 to 1 of u du minus 1 to 0 of u du. And just by using our rule that says we can flip our integral signs um, by making it positive, this now becomes an integral from 0 to 1 of u du plus an integral from 0 to 1 of u du, or just 2 times an integral from 0 to 1 of u du, or 2 times u squared over 2 from 0 to 1. And well, that's just 2 times 1 squared is 1, so 1 half minus 0. 
which is just one. And so pretty straightforward there on that method as well. Just making sure we know that that thing crosses through the x-axis at pi over two. And again, we knew that because from zero to pi over two, sine of x is positive and cosine of x is positive. But from pi over two to pi, sine of x is positive and cosine of x is negative. Therefore, the product of them is going to be negative. The next thing we're going to talk about here with this is when we have two continuous functions and we want to find the area between two curves. So in order to find the area between two curves, all we have to do is take the interval um, and integrate the function, the, the upper function, minus the lower function. And the nice thing about this is when we're looking for the area between two curves, we don't really have to worry about is the function above or below the x-axis, or, or are they both above, are they both below, is one above, is one below. All we have to worry about is which function is above the other function. So if we think about it like this red one is f of x, and this blue one is g of x here. Um, if I was looking for the area between the two curves, let's say from 2 to 4, well, the area of the red one would be the integral from 2 to 4, and the area of the blue one be this part. And so in order to find the part between them, I just have to take the red piece, the integral from a to b of f of x, and subtract the integral from a to b of g of x. And that would effectively eliminate this section that's underneath the blue curve. And we would have just an integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx when f is above g of x. The cool thing is this works if one function is above the x-axis or the other function is below the x-axis, or even if the functions are crossing through the x-axis. I'm not going to demonstrate all those examples, but you can see that if I wanted the area of the region from 2 to 4 between f and g, well, if I took the integral of f from 2 to 4, I'd get this, and if I subtracted the integral from 2 to 4 of g, I'd get the positive value of this area. And so the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x would still give me that entire area, or not area in b, but area between the two curves. And so regardless of where the functions are, as long as f of x is always above g of x, you can always do the integral from a to b of f minus g. Now, if the two functions intersect each other, cross through each other on the integral, we're going to have to separate it out into multiple integrals. So we'll see some of those later today as well. So let's see if we can find the area between the curves x squared plus 1 and negative x squared minus 1 from 0 to 1. In order to do this, we'll start by sketching a quick graph. Here is x squared plus 1 and negative x squared minus 1. And I think we probably can tell for sure that these don't cross through each other anywhere between 0 and 1. And they don't ever cross through each other. So all we have to do to find the area from 0 to 1 between those two curves is do an integral from 0 to 1 of the first function minus the second function, okay, f of x minus g of x. And so we can now combine this together, an integral from 0 to 1 of 2x squared plus 2 dx, which is just 2 thirds x cubed plus 2x from 0 to 1, or 2 thirds plus 2 minus the whole bunch of 0, which comes out to be 8 thirds. So this one, we want to find the area between the curves, um, between um, x equals 0 and x equals pi over 4. So between secant squared x and sine x on that. So in order to do that, let's first graph sine of x. So here's sine of x. And we know that secant looks, um, you know, secant looks like this. And secant squared, and secant's got another. Um, 
another section down here that looks like that, but we're not doing secant, we're doing secant squared. So all those would actually come up above the x-axis to become positive. And, and so the lowest value that secant ever goes to, or secant squared ever goes to is uh, positive one. The highest that sine ever goes to is positive one. So we know that these are never gonna cross through each other. And if we're looking from zero to pi over four, it's pretty clear that secant squared is gonna be above sine of x. So all we have to do is an integral from zero to pi over four of secant squared x minus sine x dx. The integral of secant squared is tangent and the integral of negative sine is positive cosine. We'll just evaluate it from zero to pi over four, giving us tangent of pi over four is one, cosine of pi over four is root two over two, tangent of zero is zero, and cosine of zero is one. So we just end up with that area is root two over two. For this one, we want the area of the region that is enclosed between the two functions, 2 minus x squared and negative x. So let's sketch a quick graph just so we can see what we're looking at here. Um, 2 minus x squared just looks like this, and negative x looks like this. And so if we're talking about, pretend that it goes to the origin, if we're talking about the area of the region that's enclosed between the two of them, we are talking about this section that we're shading in red here. That's the section that we closed between them. And in order to do that, since we're not giving an interval here, we have to actually set these two functions equal to each other and see where they intersect. So we'll write two minus x squared equals negative x, which tells us that x squared minus x minus two equals zero. And if we factor this, we'll get x plus one and x minus two, telling us these intersect at negative one and two. And that gives us the interval in which we need to integrate. So we'll integrate from negative one to two. The upper function, which is the parabolic function, two minus x squared, minus the lower function, which is negative x. So simplifying that just a little bit gives us two minus x squared plus x inside that integral. And if we integrate that, we'll end up with two x minus x cubed over three plus x squared over two from negative one, two. And that'll be four minus eight thirds plus two minus, and if we evaluate that at negative one, that's negative two plus one third and plus a half. And whatever that ends up coming out to be, let's see here, it looks like that's, we got four plus two is six, uh, minus the negative two, I'll just make that an eight, six minus the negative two gives us eight. That's all the whole numbers. We've got minus eight thirds minus another third. So minus nine thirds or minus three. And then we've got minus a half. So we got eight minus three is five. Five minus a half ought to be nine halves. And so the little piece that we've got to add in here for this one was that we needed to make sure that we were doing um, the correct interval, we need to find the place where these two functions intersect. And that's going to be a pretty common thing that you're going to have to do with a lot of these area, a lot of these area curves, uh, these, uh, these functions where we're looking for the area between two curves is figure out where the two functions intersect, but they're not necessarily going to always just give you the, uh, the points of intersection. So our next one here, we're going to look for the area of the region enclosed between two cosine x and x squared minus one. And so um, two cosine x, I think we should know what two cosine x looks like. Two cosine x, 
goes up to two and it just looks like a cosine curve. And then let's sketch over here too. And x squared minus one just looks like this. And I don't know, then maybe that's not a super amazing looking version of our graph. But we're talking about the area of the region between the two of them. We're talking about this region right here, which means we need to find the points of intersection there. And so in order to do that, we'll need to use a graphing calculator here. So we'll pull up our really convenient graphing calculator here that we've got. And we will graph on it 2 cosine x, and we will graph x squared minus 1, and we will find the points of intersection. And we really only need to find one of them because we know that this function, uh, both these functions are even functions. So once we find the first one over here, which we got to be, looks like negative. 1.265424. The other one over there is going to be positive 1.265424. So we've got our points of intersection. And our upper function is clearly the cosine function. We're going to do 2 cosine x minus x squared minus 1 dx. And we're going to integrate that from negative 1.265424 to positive 1.265424. And again, for that, we're just going to use our graphing calculator to find that value. So math option nine, we're going to integrate from negative 1.265424 to positive 1.265424. And our functions were 2 cosine x minus the quantity x squared minus 1 dx, which gives us 4.99490778. And again, if this was the AP test, you need to show where 2 cosine x equal x squared minus 1 by just writing, that's the equation you're having your calculator solve. That's how you found your intersection points. You'd write the integral and you'd just say it equals 4.99490778. And again, you can round to three or more decimals, but never less than three, unless it specifies. All right, here we're going to take a look at the area of the region in the first quadrant bounded by y equals the square root of x and the x-axis and the line y equals x minus 2. So first, let's just sketch what this looks like. Uh, we're talking about the area of the region in the first quadrant bounded by root x and x minus 2. Oops, call that negative 2 there. So just this area in the first quadrant. And so what makes this one a little bit uh, more difficult here for us is that we'll note that the upper bound of our region is always the square root of x, but the lower bound of our region actually changes. For part of this, it's the x-axis, but for part of this, it's the line x minus 2. And so we'll need to figure out uh, where this crosses through. Where does x minus 2 cross through the x-axis? Well, it crosses through right here at x equals 2. So in order to do this, we're going to have to do an integral of the upper function, square root of x, minus the lower function, the x-axis. I don't really actually need to sub subtract anything. Um, from 0 to 2. And then we need to add to that an integral where we go from 2 to this intersection point up here. And where does root 
x equal x minus two, just I think looking at that real quickly, you can see that that dx equals four. So we're going to integrate from two to four of the upper function root x minus the lower function x minus two. Okay, so if we integrate root x, that's x to the one half that we're integrating. So x to the one half will go up to three halves and will become two thirds x to the three halves from zero to two. And we'll add to that two thirds x to the three halves minus x becomes minus x squared over two and minus negative two is positive two. So you integrate positive two to get plus two x. And we'll do that from two to four. <clears throat> so, if we plug in, uh, if we plug in two to our two thirds x to the three halves. Um, two to the three halves is just two root two, and so this becomes four root two over three minus zero. So we have two root two times two, four root two over three minus a zero, and then we'll add to that, we plug in four to two thirds x to the three halves, the square root of four is two, and two cubed is eight, so that'd be 16 thirds, minus four squared is 16 over two is eight, plus another eight, and then we'll subtract this whole thing evaluated to two, which is four root two over three, so we just did that first one with the two, and then minus two squared is Four over two is two plus four. And all of this, the four root two over three, will cancel with the four root two over three over here. And we're left with, let's see, a minus eight and a plus eight cancels. And then we've got 16 thirds minus negative two plus four. So 16 thirds minus two is 10 thirds. And so we'll note that because the lower bound of our region changed, that's why we had to separate this into two different integrals. We didn't always have the same upper function as we did lower function. Ah, so for this one, we're looking for literally the exact same thing. So here's x minus two, we're still looking for this same region. Uh, but this time we're gonna do this a little bit differently. We're going to look at this and say, well, what if I instead found this whole area and then subtract it off this piece that I've got here uh, that's at the bottom that's just a triangle. Right? And we already knew this was two units and this was two units. So right, if I just were to take the entire integral from zero to four, where my upper function is square root x and my lower function is x minus two, That'd give me that whole region in black. And if I just subtract off that triangle, one half of the base times the height, that should give me the appropriate thing, right? One half of the base times the height for that little triangle. And so this might be a little bit easier. If we integrate root x again, that's two thirds x to the three halves. And if we integrate minus x, that's minus x squared over two. And if we integrate the positive two, that's plus two x from zero to four, and then we're gonna subtract from that two at the very end. And if I plug in four to two thirds X to the three halves, that's 16 thirds minus eight plus eight minus two or 16 thirds minus two, which is just 10 thirds, same as before. So there's not always one way to find these values. Sometimes we can use um, slightly different methods. But look, we got the same one again. Here is root x, here is x minus two. I'm still looking for this, um, but instead this time what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna just find this whole area and I'm gonna knock off this triangle, which if this was two and this was four, that's two, right? Um, and then our if this was four from what we found before, this y value here is two. So this is also two. And so what we're looking at here, now our upper function is always 
square root of x. And our lower function is always the x-axis. We're just going to integrate root x from 0 to 4 and subtract from it that other triangle. And so now this is going to be even easier. Now this is just 2 thirds x to the 3 halves from 0 to 4 minus 2. And that's just 16 thirds again minus the 0 minus 2, or just 10 thirds once again. So depending on how you decide to set it up, your work might look different than mine, but you should always be able to get the same answer. Now we're just going to do a couple more of these. This time we're going to find the area of the region between sine x and cosine x, uh, regions possibly, between sine x and cosine x on the interval 0 to pi over 2. So here's sine x from 0 to pi, and here's cosine x from 0 to pi, and it looks like they cross through each other right here when sine of x equals cosine of x, and we should know that that's at pi over 4. And so from 0 to pi over 4, the upper function is cosine x, and the lower function is sine x. And then we'll add to that the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2, where our upper function is sine x, and our lower function is cosine x. And that ought to give us, here's pi over 2, that ought to give us the area of those two sections right there. And so the integral of cosine is sine, and the integral of negative sine is positive cosine. So you've got sine x plus cosine x from 0 to pi over 4. And then we'll add to that the integral of sine x, which is negative cosine x, and the integral of negative cosine, which is negative sine, from pi over 4 to pi over 2. And now we just do our trick here, sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, plus cosine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, minus the sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So there's our first piece. And we'll add to that the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So we've got 0 minus the sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. We've got 0 minus 1 there minus, and then we've got negative root 2 over 2, minus root 2, 2. And combining all that together, this is root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2, which is root 2. So we've got root 2 minus 1, minus another 1. And then over here, we've got minus a negative root 2. So we've got plus a root 2. So we've got 2 root 2 minus 2 as our final value there. So breaking this down into the, finding the place where they intersect, and then breaking it down into two separate integrals so that we have um, all positive values. So this is the last one we're going to do today. We're not actually going to evaluate this. We're just going to set up the integral that would find us the area of the regions between 2x squared plus 10 and 4x plus 16. We're looking for all the, the regions between those two curves um, on the interval from negative 2 to 5. So. The first thing we'll need to do is see where these functions actually intersect with each other. So let's set 2x squared plus 10 equal to 4x plus 16. That gives us 2x squared minus 4x minus 6 equals 0. And if we divide everything by 2, this gives us x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0, or x minus 3, and x plus 1. So we know that these two functions cross through each other at negative 1 and at 3. 
And if you think about just a basic sketch of what this should look like, uh, 2x squared plus 10 is just a parabola, and 4x plus 16 is just a line. And it should um, be clear to us then that from negative 2 to negative 1, which is right here where these are intersecting, um, our parabola ought to be above our line. And then in between negative 1 and 3, our line ought to be above our parabola. And then from 3 to 5, our parabola ought to be above our line again. So putting all that together, we're going to have an integral from negative 2 to negative 1 of the parabola minus the line. And we'll add to that an integral from negative 1 to 3 of the line minus the parabola. Clearly going to run out of room here. And then we will add to that a third integral from 3 to 5. And now again, we have the parabola above the line. And so we could go through and simplify all that and evaluate it, but this is just going to stick up and not evaluate it. And that will allow us to find the total area of those three different regions. If I could go in here and sketch here so if this is negative two and this is five out here. We'd be talking about this region plus this region plus this region. So the important things to remember here mostly are uh, see if your function crosses through the x-axis, if you're worrying about just one function and its area between the function and the curve, or between the curve and the x-axis. Um, and then secondly, if you have multiple functions, make sure you check to see if they intersect with each other anywhere on your interval. And if they do break up that integral into multiple different integrals. So next time we're going to do a few problems where we do this uh, actually in terms of y. And then we're going to look at some um, piecewise defined functions that the AP test likes to throw at you in the FRQ section of the AP test. That's going to be all for today.